Shalom, Yashala Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High, Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elder apostles of Yasharala. Call Haloyim, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Haraka Kwadash, for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwa that's keeping the faith and the works. Y'all keep at it. This your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. This is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 15 and verse 46. And thou Asia that art partaker of the hope of Babylon and art the glory of her person, woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her, and hast decked thy daughters in whoredom, that they might please and glory in thy lovers, which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. Therefore saith Paul, I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence to waste thy houses with destruction and death. Right? Thou Asia that is trying to be the next Babylon. These nations see the daughter of Babylon falling. But in their mind, they thinking about who's next. Scripture tells us that two nations will have that thought in their head, right? According to Ezekiel chapter 38, Russia, and according to what I just read in 2nd Ezra chapter 15, Asia. Those will be the top two contenders, right, in these times. And I believe it speaks uh, um, about Russia again in Revelation, um, it might be chapter 19, I'm not sure, but where it says Gog and Magog, right? And speaking about, um, the bear, all right? These nations are trying to see who's next, but scripture tells us, according to second Ezra 6 and 9, we next. They don't believe it because the Most High ain't dealing with them because they the heathen. But we know it because the Most High is dealing with us. We're his people. All right, so let this video play and I'll be back. Is the Chinese government assuming a more aggressive tone of late China officials who in the past would have shrugged off uh, when confronted with accusations by the West are being... I guess most would describe as more aggressive themselves. So is it a new messaging of some sort, new strategy, or, or just a spur of the moment response that we happen to catch in the moment? Here's NRS correspondent Farron Franzak with more on what sounds like a threat from a Chinese commander. Its big debut was highly anticipated and it did not disappoint. The most advanced stealth fighter jet fitted with homegrown engines at the nation's biggest air show. You might think this is the latest U.S. Air Force fighter jet, but you're wrong. It's China's. Seeking to contain China is doomed to be futile and a failure. China-U.S. relations are at a new low between an ongoing trade war, technology, human rights, Hong Kong, the origins of the coronavirus, and now a rift between the two countries' Air Force commanders. I'm a, an engineer, among other things. U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall was sworn in back in August where his first task was to immediately put together the Air Force's 2023 budget. Kendall telling the media, quote, the budget should field the kinds of leaps ahead technologies that scare China. Chinese Air Force Commander Wang Wei quickly responding, telling reporters, quote, the U.S. can meet the People's Liberation Army in the sky. Wang 
we also referring to Secretary Kendall as a counterpart of mine who is from a major country. We are in a national strategic long-term contest with a formidable adversary. And what you do every day is important to that struggle. Kendall says the Air Force has been overly constrained and it's not been allowed to do things that are at a higher priority. One of those high priorities, getting Congress to allow the Air Force to retire older aircraft. If you look at the metrics for uh, our performance of our systems and the adversaries with their ability to try to defeat us, uh, it's pretty clear to me, it has been for some time, that we need to invest in uh, some advanced systems that are going to sustain our capability to defeat our adversaries. Kendall says he's been obsessed with China for quite some time, in particular, its military modernization and what it means for the United States. As we all know, due to the continuous provocation and containment of China by the United States, the relationship between the Chinese and the U.S. military has faced considerable difficulties and challenges. Both defense officials from China and the U.S. have held two days of talks showing a very small sign of progress. However, that small sign pales in comparison to the work still needed to fix the broken relationship. China has been generous and tolerant and true to our word. While the U.S. has serious problems in its self-awareness, its perception of China, and today's world. China adding, it's that view by the U.S. of China that is the root cause and the difficulties between the two countries and the two militaries. For the news with Rick Sanchez, I'm Farron Franzak. All right, so <clears throat> like I stated earlier, these nations see Babylon falling, right? Yes, America has, I guess you could say, the greatest army on the planet now, but all of the material that they, the military use is old as hell, all right? Them people overseas are making leaps and bounds as far as uh, technology for war goes. Not for no entertainment, but missiles, jets, tanks. Are they doing it over there, man? In Russia and in uh, China. All right? And these people see it. And when I say these people, I'm talking about the daughter of Babylon. They see it. They see these other nations advancing beyond them. They know their kingdom is falling, man. All right? They know their kingdom is falling. That's why they, they trying so hard to link up with them outside nations, man. They, they really do believe that after this war, they going to go on into another phase of this same kingdom. But the most high said, no, nah, it don't work like that. So, hold up. Okay, this is the book of Daniel, chapter 5 and verse 21. It says, and he, and he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beasts. And his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven but this is the point till he knew that the most high power ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will all right and the most high's word has already been stretched as it pertains to who got next all right, matter of fact, let me read that right quick. This is the book of Second Ezra, uh, chapter six, and verse seven. It says, "Then answered I and said." What shall be the pardon asunder of the times or 
when shall be the end of the first and beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right. Now, to get the understanding of what event will happen after the end of the world, let's see. Let's, let's just see right quick. So I'll take 30 years. chapter 11 and verse 14 says the second woe is past and behold the third woe cometh quickly those woes are world wars woe means destruction right so each war brought a certain level of destruction on the planet on the earth that's why it was called world wars, because it was wars of the world. All right? The Second World War introduced the, the atom bomb. The First World War introduced uh, genocide, so uh, well, so called. All right? With them, with them other people. Right, but you still had people that was getting, you know, they were getting dead in. It's just being real. The folk were getting dead in over there. Right? So this third woe will be the most destructive. And the most I says this after that third woe. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Hamashiach, and he shall reign forever and ever. After that third woe, Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. All right. Let's go to the book of, um, of uh, Haggai. Chapter 2 and verse 22. It says, And I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. All right? When the Most High once a kingdom overthrown, that kingdom is done. It ain't nothing nobody can do to stop it. It's going to go exactly how his words say. And if you pay attention to prophecy, you watch and you pray, it's going down exactly how his word says it would. All right. So at the end of the day, man, a bob, a ball. Yahweh Ratazah, these precepts in this video were edifying. Call hello in Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Harakah, Kodash. Shalom, Yashal.